Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and here we are doing some more practice questions on financial ratios. Uh, these are drawn from past HSC papers. The links will be in the show notes. You can see the list of questions that we are going to cover in case you want to try them first and then come back for the solutions. Okay, let's start with our first one here. We are looking at the 2016 HSC. We've got a balance sheet here for Steve's Lawn Services. So if we look at the question here, if Steve is a sole trader, how much equity does he have in the business? So in terms of this question, that if Steve is the sole trader, he doesn't have to share that with anyone at all. So if I look at total equity, and I've just drawn over it a little bit, I'll just take that away. So, that, so if we look at the total equity section here, that that is the size of equity in the business. So if there were other owners, that that amount would be shared a number of different ways, but here it is not shared. Steve gets all of it. So the figure here is the total of that number, $35,500. So here we are at question 12, same HSC and the second part of the question. You can see here, it's the same set of financial figures. The question reads, the current ratio, current assets divided by current liabilities for this business is, and here we've got these things. In terms of our comparison, we can see that the industry standard current ratio is 1.9 to 1. So if I remind myself about the current ratio, which they have very helpfully done, say the current ratio equals current assets divided by current liabilities. The challenge here is that I don't know what stock is on the current assets front. I just don't have that figure. I know that current liabilities is that figure on the right hand side, but I don't have the figure for assets. So if I remind myself about the overall equation, I know, okay, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So if I'm thinking about it, I'm probably not going to know assets at this point because I'm still waiting on stock. But I know here that liabilities are 5,000 plus 5,500 plus 100,000 plus 22,700 plus 12,800. Essentially, it's all the things on that side. And when I add all these things up, I'm going to get $146,000. So now I can say the whole assets pile equals $146,000. So I can say 146K will equal 15K. I'm going to take a few shortcuts here. Very naughty of me. Plus 3K plus X, which will be stock, plus 40K plus 85K. So that the key thing is, I'm trying to figure out what is stock so I can get back to my current assets. So if I do all of these calculations, what I get is 146K equals 143K plus x. So therefore, x will equal $3,000. And x here is stock. Okay, a lot of work, isn't it? So then I can say, all right, well, current assets then will equal 15,000 for cash, plus 3,000 for accounts receivable, plus 3,000 for stock, which will then equal 21,000. So I can come over here and say the current ratio will equal 21,000 over current liabilities here, which is going to be 10,500. Let's just make these the same kind of units here. So what we're saying is that the current ratio for this business is that it has twice as many assets compared to liabilities. So here, if the industry standard is 1.9 to 1, and we are at 2, we're doing pretty well. So it's not too high, because it's very close. We've calculated, it's not low, it's acceptable. It's pretty good. 
So here we are. So we've got from the 2016, let's do that orange, 2016 HSC. So we've got here business A, business B, annual sales, net profit, accounts receivable, and they've helpfully given us the formulas. And it's telling us which of the following statements is correct. So what I like to do with these is kind of think about, well, we've got two elements, profitability and efficiency that we need to work out. And we've got these two things. So with net profit ratio, that's our profitability part. With the accounts receivable, that is our efficiency part. So what I might do is set up a table um, in terms of what I'm talking about. And I might say, let's start with the profitability component. And I'll say, okay, I've got business A, I've got business B, and I'll put a line down here and a line over there. So what I would say is that if I'm talking about net profit here, I've got net profit divided by sales. So for this here, I will have 400,000 divided by sales, 1.6 million, which here, so that's a quarter, is 0 0.25. Okay, the net profit ratio is 25%. And then I go to B and I'm thinking, okay, well, net profit here is 400,000, same net profit, but it is on a larger amount of sales. So this here is 14%. So what I can do now is I can say, well, A is more profitable. So then I can say, okay, A is more profitable, A is more profitable. Great, now I need to work out efficiency. So then I will have uh, A and B, just section that off here. So with efficiency, so I'm looking at the accounts receivable turnover ratio, which for A will equal sales, so 1.6 million, divided by accounts receivable. So here, that this will give me eight times. If I look at B over here, then I'm gonna say, okay, so I've got 2.8 million divided by their sales, sorry, divided by their accounts receivable. So you might be able to work it out from there. I have a little bit of a challenge in terms of that. So what I'm going to do over in this little section is I'll say, let's just convert it to days, right? Because I know that the more efficient a business is, the fewer days it will need to collect that money. So what I will do is for business A, is I will put 365 divided by that eight times, which will then give me how many days it takes approximately. So this will be 45 days. And then for business B, I will put 365 over 11.2, and that in terms of days, that will give me 32 days. So in this instance, B is more efficient because it takes fewer days to get that money. Days. So here, business A is more profitable, but it is less efficient than business B. Business B collects its accounts receivable more quickly. Question from the 2014 HSC, and we've got a balance sheet here. We've got financial information for Kerry's Warehouse from the year before, and then we've also got industry averages. So it says, which of the following statements is true about liquidity for Kerry's Warehouse in 2014? So if I'm thinking about liquidity, I'm thinking about short-term financial health, and so I can go to my liquidity ratio, which is the current ratio, which equals current assets divided by current liabilities. So in this instance, my current assets are 1,500. My current liabilities are 1,000. So here, the current ratio is 1.5. So if we're thinking about it, that Kerry's business has 1.5 times more assets than liabilities, which is pretty good. So if I say, so in 2014, the current ratio 
equals 1.5. If we go back a year, 2013, the current ratio was 1.25. So we can see that in 2014, it has improved, which is good. So that if I go to the answer categories, I can say, okay, so it has improved since 2013, not worsened, not worsened. So I'm already down to a 50-50. And then if I think about it, I look, okay, so what is the industry average here? The industry average in terms of the current ratio is 100%. I'm at 150%. So we are also better than the industry average. So our answer for question 19, that would be A. Okay, so then we've got a second part to this question. So here we are at 20, same year, same HSE. Okay, so the question says, which of the following statements is true about gearing? So now we are looking at gearing and that we are looking at the debt to equity ratio. So what we need to do is we need to start by thinking, okay, so what is the debt? So with the debt to equity ratio, we've got total liabilities divided by total equity. If we look here, we have got total liabilities, sure. So we've got 7,000. And if we are thinking about total equity, we might need to do a little bit of calculations. So if I go back to my accounting formula of assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So owner's equity is going to equal assets minus liabilities. So here I know that assets are 10,000 because it is 1,500 plus 8.5 minus 7,000 equals 3,000. 7,000 on 3,000, and that will give me 2.3 times, or 233%. That liabilities are 2.3 times as large as equity. So if I think about it in terms of what it's been, so I could say, so this is for 2014. So what I can do is I can go back to 2013 and I know that the debt to equity was 150%. So that if I look at this, the debt to equity ratio is much larger, <laughs> larger much larger. So that debt has increased and that the ratio has worsened because there has been an increase in debt funding. So if I look here, it's the worsened part, which might seem a bit weird because, oh, it's larger, isn't that better? It's no, more of it is debt, that is worse. And then we look at the industry average, that the industry average for 2013 to 14 for debt to equity is 100%. So you can see here that actually Kerry's figures are more than twice industry average, which is not a great thing. So it is worse than the industry average and it has gotten worse since 2013. So the answer here is D. Okay, here is our final question for the video. Kevin is considering investing in a business. Okay, so if he's considering investing in a business that he's likely weighing up some options of where to invest and which business to invest in. So to help Kevin determine which business to invest in, he should consider comparative ratio analysis because. So if I have this word comparative, that what it is telling me is that we are comparing businesses. We are evaluating businesses which makes sense because if you're investing money into a business, you want to look at a few different options. So comparative ratio analysis, why do we do it? Well, because we want to evaluate different businesses. And in some ways, we really want to get an accurate picture of similar businesses. So Kevin has, you know, X dollars to invest. He's looking at a whole business. <laughs> He's looking at a whole bunch of businesses that uh, fit his budget. And then he's thinking about, okay, which one should I invest in? So comparative ratio analysis doesn't just look at cash flow because there are many other ratios. Market share, not really a ratio thing here. Business sales growth is measured, okay, 
but that's not really telling us why we have a comparison. So the point here is that comparative ratio analysis, we are evaluating similar businesses. We're looking at which is the best investment option for Kevin in this situation. Okay, so this was the second part of the financial ratios worked, worked examples. I've run out of the ability to speak. Anyway, if you have any questions or things you want to clarify, just put them in the comments and I will see you in the next one.